Well, we're on our third day of hunting. Um, last night we stayed up. We got up above some elk. We could see uh, two herds of elk off each side of this ridge we were on. There was a six point with a dozen or so cows on the one side. The other side had a real nice seven by six bull and some uh, satellite bulls. He probably had 30 or 40 cows. When we dropped down in the creek at daylight, the guy was right in the creek bottom. As soon as we got going, we were right on him. <laughs> The, on the headset, I took one of the deals off the ear, and so I'm listening through my ear and through the headset, and I bugled again, and when I heard him bugle, I thought, God, it sounds like he's right behind me. <laughs> and he was. He was about 40 or 50, well, about 50 yards up the hill behind me, and here I'm still thinking he's in the creek. And so I, uh, I the whole time, Jason had, had went had kind of backtracked to get around on him. Well, heck, he'd, he'd come right down towards Jason, and, and we kind of caught his boat <coughs> off guard that he had circled around us completely. And I don't know how he ever got out of the creek without us seeing him, but he did. And uh, so then I grabbed the camera off the tripod, and I had cords and crap going everywhere. At that point, we figured we better we better just leave him alone, so we because he wouldn't bugle back no more. And since he wouldn't answer no more, um, but his cows were mewing and this and that, we thought we'll leave him alone, give him a day or two. Now this ridge right up here. On the, this is the ridge Jason and I used to come off of to hunt this country. When you get back up here towards the left, um, back up in there, on the other side of that, the canyon on the other side isn't as deep up there as it is obviously down, down to the right. But from up there it's only about a, probably 800 to 1,000 foot drop into another uh, canyon and up the other side of that is a road. And that's where we used to hunt this country from until um, the Forest Service shut that road down. We've had a lot of rain the last couple days, so it's been kind of aggravating because the camera, we got to keep it in a rain jacket and we got to be careful of that. So we've, we've missed out on some footage because of the weather. Um, and sometimes you miss out on footage because of the distance or because all of a sudden they're right there and, and whatever it is is gone before you get the camera out. So we're gonna, it gets kind of aggravating sometimes. Uh, right now we're a little aggravated, I guess, because we, uh, like this morning, <laughs> that kind of stuff happens, but uh, but we're going to keep at it, and uh, we, we got some, we're going to go out and hunt those flats out there, and we know there's elk there, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go after them now, and that, that flat over there that's got that bunch of timber and them Christmas trees in it, there's a pretty good size of herd that was in there. Here we are, we're down in the bottom, we just come through a brush patch, I <laughs> just found an apple. There's an apple tree on this here, down here, and uh, we just came through one heck of a brush patch, and uh, it was just thick and tall, and there were some trails through there that were we had to stoop to get over. I don't know. I suppose they're bear trails, I guess. I guess that's what you call them, because that's probably what's always going through them. How's that apple? It's pretty good. I got one for you too. Uh, hey, you're all right. The one with the worm. We found this tree over here. Two years ago, it was full of these little plums. Now this year, it doesn't look like the tree's doing very well. It doesn't have very many, a lot of broken branches on it. It doesn't have very much fruit on it. But they're real good. The bears really like them, which is why this price is tore up. Um, this is pretty tough country, I think, to make living in, but this time of year, there's a lot of the fruits around, and it's been a pretty good deal when you're in here to uh, come across this. It's kind of neat. We're in the middle of nowhere, and here's a plum tree. Get around that knob, there's a bunch of that Christmas tree size stuff. Yeah. 
And a lot of times they'll go out this ridge and feed on it. We've watched them do that the last couple of years in the evenings. Yeah. So I thought, well, my best chance is to get over there. Well, I could hear him bugling on the other side of the ridge. And then pretty soon, God, it sounded like he was farther and farther away. And I thought, well, he stayed in the creek or he went back down in it. So I, uh, I started coming over. And there was, uh, I jumped um, a mule deer doe out of that, uh, that stuff. This is one of the nicest bulls we saw on this trip. He was a real nice six by six, long tines, good frame, good all around, real heavy. Um, I saw him real well from about 150 yards uh, just before I spooked him there. And uh, what I did was I got in and I had a couple does bedded down, mule deer does bedded down between the elk and myself. And, and uh, I spooked them and they spooked the elk and uh, they went out. They were about four or 500 yards away from us right here. And uh, just it was kind of a neat thing to sit and watch from a distance. We got some pretty decent video, although they were a ways away. But he was a real good bull. I mean, he'd be one you'd tickled to get. And we got to watch them a little bit, um, th but they never really settled down here. The, there was always a couple cows watching us, and uh, after a while they they went on their way. But uh, but it was still neat just to watch them. But as you can see in the video, he's he's a pretty nice bull. He's not a monster um, by by some standards, but but he's an awful nice public lands bull. You can really see the diversity of the canyon here. Uh, we go from really dense timber and a lot of underbrush to where it's just wide open, almost plains-like. And it uh, at times makes it really, really tough to sneak up on. Like Joe said, we're we're several hundred yards away, and we can see him clear as day. And, it, you know, we were just kind of in grass uh, watching him for quite a while um, before they took off. But uh, sometimes it's just really hard to, to get up on them. When you get in a deal like this where you just spooked him, there's really no way you're going to be able to bugle. He bugles here a time or two, um, but, you know, you're not going to be able to do much but watch him. And, uh, you know, we'd already kind of, I had already messed up. And all you can do then is get a little footage, enjoy the show, uh, but there's really nothing you can do. Between the openness and the fact that you spooked him, you know, that's about it. But it's still neat when you see this stuff, even when, it, when they get away, but doggone, where else can you see this? You know, this is... This is really something, and these are the things you remember on a trip like this.
if you were going to this, you'd be able to see it. I don't know. You know, if we ate them, they could be otter pops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.